Hi guys, welcome back again to a art journal process. It's been a little while since I've done an art journal process video, um, just because it took me a while to get this one edited and get the voiceover ready, which I'm doing right now. It's been, um, yeah, I did this a couple of weeks ago actually. I have, I was itching to do this page. I had these pieces of book paper that had these cool illustrations of animals and I wanted to do something with them so I'm going through and I'm just uh, cutting around the illustrations that I think I want to include on the page so the I think this was like a little uh, it wasn't an encyclopedia I don't think but it was it was like a I don't know it was something like that and yeah it had some cool pictures in it and I'm just going around trimming them out so that I can have a fiddle with where I want to put them on the page and try and work out which ones I'm going to use. At this point, I don't know if I'm going to use all of them or if I'm just going to use some of them. Um, it's a really um, impulsive process and things change as you go. But this is a fold-out page in the art journal that I made <coughs> Excuse me, for myself. So a big spread... And this page ends up so chunky by the end. I just keep adding and adding things to it. So you'll see at the end. But here all I'm doing is using... I'm actually using paint as if it were glue. This wasn't very successful to be honest. It wasn't as successful as I was hoping. But I thought that I would do it this way so that I could start to blend the images onto the page at the same time as I'm gluing them down. I think that I give up on that pretty quickly and I start to use gesso but um, yeah I'm just trying to to use the paint as glue. I'm using an old business card to to spread the paint around the page and here I'm going in with gesso and softening the colour and trying to blend those images on even better. So while I'm trying to blend the images I'm also trying to stick them with the gesso as well. And this does work fine in the end. Um, and yeah I'm just kind of being not too fussy about uh, covering too much of the picture or anything like that. I'm not being all neat and um, particular about it. I'm just I'm just trying to make sure essentially that the pages, the, the pictures are going to stick properly. They're not going to come off. They're not going to lift around the edges. And, I'm, and then I want to try and start blending around the edges and softening um, those pictures up so that they look more a part of the page as a whole. So more gesso everywhere. <laughs> And this page was already, it already had some layers on the page. So if you've watched any of my other art journal um, videos, you know that I've already gone ahead and added some um, layering and stuff just to help me break the pages ahead of time. So this one had some book pages already laid down and it also had some tissue paper. This was from something I bought um, on Kiki K website and it came with this really cool tissue paper with the envelopes, which was so cute. So that was already laid on the page ahead of time, which I find really makes it easier to start breaking the page. It takes kind of the fear out a little bit because the page isn't just perfectly white, isn't blank. It helps. It really does help. So I would recommend if you, if you feel stuck when you want to art journal, you don't want to, Starting is the hardest part, so I'd recommend just having some things slapped onto pages to help you get out of that frame of mind and just start. Once you start, it's a lot easier to finish. <laughs> if you never start, yeah, it just becomes more and more daunting. Anyway, I, I'm just put a little bit of paint onto some glad wrap or cling wrap and I'm just using this to spread it across the page. I just wanted to try this technique, um, the packaging technique, and see what if I liked it. I did like it. It was fun to do. It was kind of like finger painting without the mess. 
And yeah, all I'm doing is just pressing the paint um, all around the page. And again, as I'm doing this, I'm trying to soften the edges of the illustrations from the book and blend it all together. And then when that got a little bit messy, I scrunched it up into a ball and I got it a little bit wet and then I dabbed in a slightly different color blue paint and I'm kind of just using it like a sponge. Again, going around to all the images and trying to blend them in a little bit more as I go. But at the same time, I'm not being very fussy about it. I'm not really worrying if... Um, um, sorry, my son woke up, so I'm going to try and finish the voiceover anyway. But you may hear my one-year-old beside me. He's eating a banana. Eating a banana. Yeah. Hopefully he's going to keep quiet for me, but um, we'll see how we go. Anyway, so I used it like a sponge, trying to blend the pictures in as I go. I wasn't being too overly careful about covering the images too much. If they got a bit messy or whatever, it was fine. Now I'm going and using this stencil and I'm using it with, again, with gesso. So I wanted to do a bit of stenciling with the paint or like a white paint. I just used gesso and um, I'm just adding this randomly around the page. Just, just following my, um, my intuition with it and just doing whatever I feel like doing. So I'm not doing the entire stencil as I do this either. I'm just doing bits and pieces of it around the animals. And I'm using my hand <laughs> as kind of like a palette because, because I was trying to keep the, the white and the blue separate. I was a bit impatient and I didn't let the blue entirely dry first. So whenever it, the colours were getting a bit blended, I was wiping it off on my hand to try and stop that from happening. <laughs> and also if I was picking up too much paint, oh, too much gesso, I was wiping a little bit off my hands as well because... It, if it's too thick, sometimes you can mess up the stencil impression that you get. So yeah, that's all I'm doing here. And then after I've done that, what do I do next? By the way, I'd started this page early afternoon where the, there was still a little bit of sunlight. And then I went, it took me like into the night to finish it. Actually, I don't think I even completely finished it until the next morning. So you will notice that the lighting changes as I'm, as I'm going. So sorry about that. There I just used some um, Heidi, Heidi Swap Color Shine. I think it's turquoise. I'm assuming that's what the color's called. called. I just um, flicked and sprayed some on the page. And here I'm actually using a bit of um, embossing powder. So I'm just trying to sprinkle it to give like a slightly shiny metallic or glittery effect just across the page. It did get a bit thicker in some places and I, I didn't mean to do that, but I just wanted to kind of test that out and see what it would look like. And now I'm using texture paste. Why am I using texture paste? Okay, I'm doing some a little bit more stenciling now. I think the page, I'm assuming I dried the page in between and I'm just, I've mixed the texture paste with a little bit of green paint because I wanted to do this leafy stencil all around the animals and around the page and kind of frame the page a little bit. Sorry for all the background noises, um, the, the traffic and the birds and my son's eating a banana. You're going to finish that banana in a minute? Then what are you going to do? Um, but yeah, all I do is just use different bits of the stencil all around the page to add the leaves. And this stencil was kind of, I'm not very good at stenciling actually. I always seem to um, get the little spatula underneath the stencil and mess it up, which is frustrating. But so some of the impressions that I did aren't very good. And I go in later and try and fix that up a little bit to to add some definition to them. But once that was dry, I used some bubble wrap and um, 
Oh, okay, I'm not up to that yet. So I actually got this bit of scrap paper. This was a punch. I think I just tested the punch out. I thought, I wonder if I can use this as like a little stencil. And it kind of worked. I think you would need to use something thicker than just paper to get it to work even better. But it kind of worked. And I just sponged some black paint over the top of that. And I think that that looks quite cute. So I did that and then whatever black paint was left on the packaging, I went and just pressed the bubble wrap across the page. Again, in between all the animals, trying to blend them together as a whole instead of separate images. And yeah, I like the way that the black, the black looked with this. It just kind of helped bring all those different layers together. And now I'm going ahead and doing a little bit of drawing. So I wanted to draw, I felt like drawing, so I wanted to draw something and then cut it out and stick it onto the page. So I decided to draw a girl, surprise, surprise. <laughs> they seem to be very popular art journal page um, subjects. But I just, I've always liked, <gasps> hey, I've always liked drawing faces, girls' faces in particular because they're just fun to draw. So I'm drawing a girl, a girl's face and um, yeah, after I do this, I am just going to cut her out and stick her onto the page. So I'm finding that in my art journal so far, I do like doing this a lot because um, I guess I'm comfortable drawing in my sketchbooks and stuff. And so when I get the drawing right or I'm happy with the drawing, I'm, I like going through my sketchbook and pulling those out and including them in my art journal. So, ew, getting banana smushed all over my leg. Um, yeah. Yeah, so once I finish the drawing, I go in with a micron pen and add, um, kind of just go over the lines that I was happiest with. I uh, This is just part of my process when I draw after I go in with pencil I go in with a pen just because it doesn't smudge and I usually end up rubbing out the pencil lines so added the pen and then I think I'm just going to start cutting her out after I erase the pencil lines and I'm finding as well when I flick through my art journal a lot of my detailed drawings like this or more detailed drawings like this I never really color them in that's because I'm not very good at it I find I usually wreck my my drawings when I try and color them in so I'm finding that in my art journal I've got lots of backgrounds that are bright and colorful and then I've got more detailed drawings that don't have color on them so they're just um, an outline drawing on top of a colorful background and I kind of like the way that looks so I'm finding that that's become kind of a common theme in my art journal when I flick through it. So using some PVA glue to glue her down and I decided to use a bit of vellum, decorative um, vellum and make like a little tip in pocket to stick her down because I didn't want to cover up too much of the background that I had done. And this is when the page started to get really really bulky because um, I was just adding more and more and more and more and more and there was texture paste and gesso and PVA glue and extra tip-ins. It was just getting so thick by the end, but yeah. So I'm going to attach her in the middle. And before I stick her down, I decided to pull out a texture, a green texture and just go in and try and add the detail back to the stencil, the leaf stencil, because it wasn't as detailed as I had hoped. The, the, um, the texture paste and stuff started to get a bit smushed. So, um, yeah, the stencil got a bit smushed when I was doing it, and so the leaves were a bit blended together. So I just went in with the texture and a texture, a texture. And I and I just um, went around some of the leaves and then I used my pen and went around some of those white stenciling that I did earlier. And then I just drew a couple of circles and stuff around the page as well 
just to help again blend the pages. And then this is the next morning. I think you can tell by the lighting that I have gone in now and and now I'm just going to attach the tip in that I made the night before. So this this is the vellum page that I made. It's like a little fold out and I'm just attaching it with washi tape. And I don't know if that's going to actually hold. I may have to go back in and reinforce that a bit better. Um, but yeah, the little stencil that I used earlier that I made out of paper and a punch, I'm actually going to include that as a little element on the page as well. So that's what I'm doing here and I just attach it with a stapler. And then on a little project life card that I had lying around, I did this, it's like journaling, but I, I made it really scribbly on purpose. I made it ineligible. So even I can't read what I wrote. And then that's tucked inside the little fold out pocket. So I touched that inside and then I've just got these scraps of fabric. Again, I like to use my scraps. So whatever I have lying around and I just am going to attach these to the page as well. So this is another little element that I added later that added unnecessary bulk to the page. This page is so, so bulky, um, but it's okay. So using my PVA glue to stick that on. And I'm not sure what else I do after that. Oh, where I've added washi tape as well, I did reinforce it with PVA glue again just because, like I said, it's not very... It, PVA... Uh, blah, blah. Washi tape doesn't always stay stuck down. Sorry, I'm getting so distracted. My, my son's swooshing banana into my leg. <laughs> um, yeah, so just adding a couple of extra elements to the page and then... Okay, I pulled out some gesso and I decided to soften up the edges of the drawing that I did with gesso, so just to kind of blend her into the vellum because I didn't fussy cut her out. There was a little area around the drawing that was just sharp cut, so I wanted to soften that up with the gesso. So that's all I'm doing here. And I didn't want to cover up too much of the pattern on the vellum either. So I just did a little bit just to kind of make her stand out that little bit more. And I don't know if I do much else after that. I think this is all I really do. Oh, okay. Last thing I did, sorry guys, it's been a little while since I did this page. I just added a quote and I just did it with pen and um, it says, we can't help everyone, but everyone can help someone. So I thought that was a cool little quote. And that's all I do to the page. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoy this art journal process video um, and that you're enjoying this series. I'm having so much fun in my art journal and yeah, I can't wait to show, share a flip through of it with you guys soon when I get it finished. So I hope you're all having a really good day and I'll see you guys again soon. Bye-bye.